Assalamu alaikum. In this class we are going to discuss unit 4. And the title is First Aid. What is this lesson about? All the images and the title of this lesson suggest we are going to learn about First Aid. But the question is, what do you understand by First Aid? We all have heard of this term, but do we actually know what does it mean? It is immediate medical assistance that we provide to the victim to save their life. Those who are in danger, we provide them the first emergency treatment so that they are out of danger. Have you ever given first aid to anyone? You must have at least applied bandage to any fellow or somebody at home. This is also a form of first aid as the pictures shown in the slide also reflect how we provide post aid to those in emergency. We all need help at times in our life. Sometimes we may have accidents and we may get hurt. But when we are injured or suddenly become unwell, we need someone to help us, someone who knows what to do. It is a temporary and immediate help. This timely assistance comprising of simple medical techniques is most critical to the victim and is often life saving. Any lay person can be trained to administer first aid. This first aid can be carried out using minimal equipment. First aid knowledge ranges from taking care of cuts to dealing with an unconscious victim. So what we have learned in this paragraph, we all are exposed to danger anytime any place anyone can get hurt anyone can have accident anyone can be in emergency situation what we need at that time is we need a person a person who knows what to do who knows how to help you who knows how to provide you the immediate medical assistance the person should be aware of the post aid kit the person should be aware of how to deal with the problem that you are in. So this timely assistance, which only comprise of some simple medical techniques, can often be life-saving. It can save you. It can save you from further danger. It can save your life. Any person can be trained to administer first aid. It is not uh, such a science that can that. Not everyone can learn, but it is something so common that everyone should be aware of and everyone can do it. The first aid can be carried out using minimal equipment. You do not need so, so many equipments or so many uh, surgical gadgets. You only need some minimal equipment that can be used to provide first aid to the patient. Posted knowledge ranges from taking care of cuts to dealing with an unconscious victim. The situation can be a simple cut or scrape or it can be a dangerous situation. Obviously you cannot treat the patient at all but you can provide the immediate assistance that can save the person from further harm. You may save the patient till the person goes to the hospital. You can stop further bleeding. You can stop them to become further uh, endangered. So this is what the function of first aid is. Cut and scrape. Handling minor accidents at home or on the road develops a sense of crisis management. This may prepare people to tackle with unexpected emergencies with great confidence. Minor cuts and scrapes usually do not need to go to the emergency room, yet proper care is essential to avoid infection or other complications. So anybody can be in this state of crisis. What we need at that time is its proper management. So everyone should have the sense to handle with minor accidents at home or on the road. One should be prepared to tackle with unexpected emergencies with confidence if they would be aware of what and 
how to do, they would be confident in doing that. Minor cuts and scrapes usually do not need to go to the emergency room as it happens at your home, at any place where you work, that you might get minor cuts or sometimes your skin gets rubbed against a hard surface, there come scrapes. So what you do at that time, you do not immediately go to the emergency room. You try to deal with it yourself. What you need at that time is first aid. You need to apply bandage if there is no bleeding, if it is bleeding, what we have to do, we are going to study the guidelines in the coming slides. Following guidelines can help you to handle crisis and take care of all. So, we are going to study the guidelines that we need to follow if we or anyone is in the state of emergency or if there is any emergency patient. Stop the bleeding. Your first priority should be to stop the bleeding of the patient. Minor cuts and scrapes usually stop bleeding on their own. As we have discussed, it most of the time happens that if there is a minor cut or scrape, it usually stops bleeding at its own. But if they don't, apply gentle pressure with a clean cloth or bandage. Hold the pressure continuously for 20 to 30 seconds and if possible elevate the wound. As you can see in the picture as well that the AD who is providing aid to the patient has elevated the wound. It further helps in the blood circulation. So what we have to do, we have to take a clean cloth or a bandage and just place on the wound and apply a gentle pressure. Hold the pressure for 20 to 30 seconds and if possible elevate the wound. If there is wound at such a place that you cannot elevate it absolutely fine but apply gentle pressure for 20 to 30 seconds so that it, it should stop bleeding. So don't keep checking to see if the bleeding has stopped because this may damage or dislodge the clot that is forming and cause bleeding to resume. As we have seen most of the children, the way they scratch their uh, hard surface that forms once the bleeding has stopped. So don't do that. Do not keep checking to see if it, is ha it has stopped. It would stop at its own when you will keep checking it would dislodge it it would disrupt it would damage the clot that is forming it is a natural process that happens whenever you bleed your uh, because of your uh, components of the blood itself it forms a clot so that there is no further bleeding so if you would keep checking it would dislodge that cloth that is a natural that is body's natural process to save you from further bleeding so don't interfere with nature let it do what it wants to because this may cause bleeding to resume if blood spurts or continues flowing after continuous pressure seek medical assistance if you are trying to stop the bleeding and it does not and it continues flowing after uh, after applying pressure you need to seek medical assistance this is another uh, sense of crisis management that you should know that whether you are able to deal with the uh, emergency situation or you need assistance right away if you need assistance right away do not take much time and take the patient to the hospital because it might endanger the life of that person. Clean the wound. Rinse out the wound with clean water. To clean the area around the wound, use soap and a washcloth. But soap can irritate the wound, so try to keep it out of the actual wound. If dirt or debris remains on the wound after washing, use tweezers cleaned with alcohol to remove the particles. If debris still remains, See your doctor. Thorough cleaning reduces the risk of infection and tetanus. So the next step that comes after uh, stopping 
after you stop the bleeding is cleaning your wound you have to rinse out the wound with clean water and you may use so soap to clean the surface around the wound as you can see that it is not on the wound it is the area around the wound so uh, but soap can irritate the wound so try to keep it out of the actual wound so you are guided to use soap only to clean the surface around the wound and not the actual wound because it might irritate the wound if dirt or debris remains in the wound after washing use tweezers clean with alcohol to remove the particles sometimes the tissues get disrupted and because of that there uh, the wound leaves some debris some stuff there so what you need to do is if it is not uh, if it has not get washed after uh, rinsing out with the clean water you have to use tweezers but tweezers should be cleaned with alcohol first right otherwise it would further cause infection so you need clean tweezers and with the help of that tweezers you would remove the debris from the wound if you see that the debris are remained on the surface you need to see the doctor because if there would debris remain in the wound it can cause infection and tetanus because it is dead skin now it is not part of your active skin that you need to remove the dead skin from the wound so that it does not cause infection apply an antibiotic after you clean the wound apply a thin layer of an antibiotic cream or ointment to keep the surface moist the products don't make the wound heal faster but they can help your body's natural healing process work fast certain ingredients in some ointments can make a mild rash in some people if a rash appears stop using the ointment so the next thing that you do is once you have stopped the bleeding then you have rinsed the rinse out your wound with clean water now comes the next step where you apply a thin layer of antibiotic or ointment ointment is oil based and cream is water based right this is the difference between cream and ointment what is the function of antibiotic cream or ointment as the word itself suggests antibiotic so it removes bacteria it is anti to the bacteria right the products don't make the wound heal faster they do not have any ingredient that would heal your wound faster but they can help your body's natural healing process work faster so it is a kind of uh, catalyst in the reaction you might have heard of this term in your chemistry subject a catalyst so it does not actively take part in the process but it provides support it provides support to your body's natural healing process to work fast certain ingredients and in some ointment can cause a mild rash in some people uh, anybody can be allergic to anything so you should notice to what is happening if there uh, comes a mild rash or even a rash what you have to do you have to stop using that ointment you might have uh, heard your doctor asking you before prescribing you medicine that if you are allergic to this thing or this thing because it happens it's natural your body can be allergic to anything so if your body is allergic to any uh, ingredient of one of uh, these antibiotic creams so you have to stop using this ointment cover the wound bandages can help keep the wound clean and keep harmful bacteria out after the wound has healed enough to make infection unlikely exposure to the air will speed wound healing so the first step that you performed was to stop the bleeding once the bleeding has stopped wash your wound once you have washed your wound then you applied antibiotic or an ointment now comes the time to cover your wound why do we cover the wound because it keeps the wound clean and it keeps the wound safe from the harmful bacteria because bacteria cannot reach inside so once you 
uh, get to know that the wound has healed enough that it is now unlikely to get further infection now the fresh skin has come at least to some extent that it is not an open wound now now comes the time to expose your wound to the open air because it will speed up the healing process now your uh, wound needs to be healed in the open air change the dressing change the dressing at least daily or whenever it becomes wet or dirty so at least once a day or whenever you think that it has got wet or it has become dirty if you are allergic to the adhesive used in most bandages switch to adhesive free dressings or sterile gauze held in place with plastic tape gauze rolls or loosely applied elastic bandage these supplies generally are available at pharmacies you can easily uh, get all the stuff that is being mentioned here from any pharmacy if you are allergic to the adhesive you can switch to adhesive free dressing or a sterile gauze as shown in the pictures it is not necessary that you need a bandage that is that has adhesive with it that sticks to your skin but instead you can use a sterile gauze in place of that and to uh, keep it uh, intact to the surface you can use a paper tape on that sterile gauze you may get elastic bandages as well instead of these watch for signs of infection see your doctor if the wound is not healing or you notice any redness increasing pain drainage or worm you need to watch for signs if you have any wound you need to uh, monitor it you need to see whether it is healing or not you need to see whether there is any further redness whether your increase uh, where, whether your pain is increasing whether there is any drainage there is some liquid draining out of the wound or you feel that there is inflammation in your wound so you need to notice all these signs so that if you need to uh, seek medical assistance or you need to see your doctor you may on time post it kit every office factory home and pool should have an accessible post it box with the following recommended basic content the first thing that should be included in the post it box should be the post it book that clearly explains how to handle basic problems those who are in emergency if even they are not aware what to do in that situation there should be a proper guideline written in the book so that they can follow that number 2 is bandage or plasters bandage or sticky plasters are good for dressing small wounds they come in all shapes and sizes for fingers legs and anywhere else you might get little cut make sure the bandage is big enough to cover the wound if not you should use a dressing instead so if there is a minor cut or scrape you can use such bandages that are shown in front of the paragraph but if you believe that the wound is large enough that would not be covered with such uh, plasters or bandages so you should uh, use dressing instead you should cover your wound with a uh, with other uh, dressing material elastic bandages the elastic bandages are good for wrapping sprain joints or making a sling in case of a broken leg you must have seen the such kind of elastic bandages as shown in the picture that are stretchable most of the time when you have pain in the knee mostly to cover the knee joint or to cover the ankle we use such uh, bandages that it keeps the uh, area warm which help relieve the pain and if there is a broken arm so it would be helpful to give support to the arm gauze and adhesive tape gauze pads or rolls are cloth pads that are placed directly on a wound to protect and control bleeding for large cuts and scrapes you need uh, you will need adhesive tape to keep the gauze in place in an emergency a clean cloth hand towel clean t-shirt can be used to cover the wound so there should be a gauze or an adhesive tape in the first aid box so that 
you can easily use it to stop the bleeding as we have discussed it is the first step to provide the first aid that you should stop bleeding you should place a clean cloth on the surface of the wound and uh, apply gentle pressure for 20 to 30 seconds so for that you need a clean cloth or a gauze pad so it should it should be uh, must be included in the first aid kit antiseptic wipes or alcohol swabs and cotton wool as you can see in the picture as well the alcohol swab is shown why do we need alcohol swab we place it on the surface of the wound to clean it because it uh, removes all the bacteria from the surface and around so it would help to save the wound from further infection then we need safety pins and tweezers we have already discussed why do we need tweezers we need tweezers to remove the debris from the wound because the if the dead skin remains on the wound it might cause infection so we need tweezers cleaned with alcohol so that it is not harmful for the wound then why do we need safety pins we need safety pins to uh, apply to the bandage if there is no other uh, adhesive material available any tape or anything so we may use <coughs> safety pins instead scissors a pair of scissors is needed to cut the tape and gauze at the time of emergency we might are unable to uh, tear off the uh, tape or the gauze so for that we need scissors as well latex gloves latex gloves are always a good idea especially if you are dealing with body fluids from the stranger it is not for the uh safety of the patient or the victim but it is for the safety of the one who is providing aid to the victim because uh when there is open wound you are dealing with the body fluids there is blood of the patient that you are dealing with or the drainage that is coming from the wound so it is better to use latex gloves so that your skin does not uh get in touch with the patient so there is no uh, danger of uh any contamination or any uh, or getting any contaminated disease calamon lotion calamon lotion is used for soothing sunburns and stings so you one should have calamon lotion or any such lotion that can uh provide soothness to the sunburns or stings clinical thermometer you need thermometer so that you can check the temperature of the patient analgesic tablets any kind of painkillers should be there in the first aid box so that in uh, so that you can relieve the patient from the pain first aid means responding to an emergency situation accidents happen always unexpectedly but a life can be saved by having a basic knowledge of what to do in emergency and knowing proper first aid procedures basic training in first aid skills should be taught in schools in workplaces and in general be learned by all of us as it is mandatory to our modern and stressful life so it is not only for the medical staff but for everyone everyone should know how to deal with minor accidents because emergency situation can happen to anybody at any time it can happen at your home it can happen at your workplace it can happen at your school so one should be aware of the immediate assistance that you have to provide to the victim and there should be an accessible first aid kit the access should be to anyone anyone can approach that care so that it can be used in the emergency situation because nobody is safe from emergency situation it can happen to anyone but timely and correct assistance can save one's life so it is our social responsibility that we learn about it we should know and we have to learn what to do in such situations i hope you are 
by the end of this chapter you are aware what first aid is and how to provide first aid to the victim in emergency situation thank you